Good morning. Good morning to everyone. It's just me, Dr. Rob Kiltz, today. Let's see, Sunday 22nd. Ah, uh, good morning. Good morning. Leaf, Leaf family growing. How you doing? Akosha. Hello, how are you? Aliki and hers and uh Emily. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see you this morning. A beautiful day. Uh let's see, sunny and uh, no clouds so far today in upstate New York, but you know, there's a lot of rain coming all over this world. It's a crazy. Uh, let's see. Uh, good morning, Lopez. Lips, how are you? Akusha, good morning to you. And Melissa Jazar, Dr. Rob Kilt, CNY Fertility, the Fertile Fireside Chat, although some of you may be able to see the fire, maybe not. I'm here to talk about the journey, answer your questions, how to improve your health and wellness, uh, and ultimately, how to improve your conception, delivery of a healthy child. Hola, la Roma. And, uh, you know, lots going on. Uh, good morning. Uh, Heather, when, when are transfers in Atlanta? Working with Dr. Uh, Verdialis. Uh, she's been coming up to Syracuse and doing them, but we're working on that, uh, getting Sarasota open. And I'm sorry it takes a long time to get these things going. Rebecca. Uh, let's see, Akira, good morning, how are you? FET on Wednesday, lots of faith, Olivia, prayers, uh, and and believing in that higher power is really critical for all of us. And so the higher power is within all of us, and faith always trumps facts. Although science, we're looking for facts, but there's so much we don't know or understand in this uh, fertility journey for sure. Natural, let's see, exo, lizexo, how are you? Uh, let's see, uh, Sar Griswold, how are you? Good morning. Uh, and again, uh, have the faith, be persistent, and don't give up. Uh, Kayla Mullins, hello, good morning, how are you? Uh, let's see, uh, did my third embryo transfer and got my first beta, 142, second is 376. Uh, I've been doing HCG boosters every day. Would those make numbers that high? The HCG booster maybe adds about 20 to those numbers. So those are good numbers. So whatever you've been doing to get you where you're at, keep doing it. Stay on your medications. Quite often, I'm recommending at least 12 weeks. And don't forget lipids and Lovenox and things like that. And, oh, kilts is keto, right? Whether you're a vegan, vegetarian, or carnivarian, stay as keto as you can throughout pregnancy. It is the game changer. Uh, don't forget the family building guide on our website. You go to resources and you can download a digital copy for free or go to Amazon if you want to uh, get a paper copy. Uh, Natural Tay, how are you? How long does it take after the consultation to start IVF? Uh, we are working to get people in in the two to four weeks and we're working to get it you know, more fluid. The COVID has been crazy on our team. Uh, we lost some team members, uh, but we've gotten so busy and we want to be the very best and continue to do that. So uh, if you're struggling to get a hold of someone, uh, but about two to four weeks after you have that phone or video consultation, we're doing very little in-person consultations. We want to be able to talk to you guys in so many amazing ways uh, that it's so much easier to do with uh, phones and, and, and video and things like that. Uh, let's see our, our, let's see, era max, uh, or Nidra. Uh, there's a lot in that long name. Sorry about that. Good morning, by the way. Uh, let's see. Z uh, Zamara, is it possible to get a negative home pregnancy test six days after FET and have a positive beta? It is by the way. So don't give up. Uh, let's see. Second FET failed and currently waiting for my third, uh, past H16, uh, so don't forget in the family building guide is a really nice kind of list of, of the, the immune protocols on page 73. And there's a, a big checklist about all the things you could potentially check off. Have I done a laparoscopy? Uh, am I doing an immune protocol? Uh, and my thyroid been checked and, and uh, all these things I think are really important, uh, which is the thing that matters. We don't really know that. Uh, and there's so many prospective randomized studies. It can be very confusing of what the right answers are. Uh, but if what you're doing isn't working, we've got to change it up. Uh, do you add sub-Q or h -E or Neupogen? Or do you add Lovenox, uh, PRP, HCG washes? Uh, are you doing weekly lipids? Do you look towards 
intravenous immunoglobulins or or Humira, all the things to look at in the process. So don't give up. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Messed up on my cetratide. Do I just continue next day? Any tips when not getting all the medication in? Jocelyn Palacio. Our nursing team can be very helpful with that. And also, all of you guys can help on that. Uh, but uh, if you missed a dose, just take another dose in the morning. And then, and, and in my opinion, the morning dose of cetratide works really well. So if you missed an evening, start in the morning and then go to the next morning and the next morning. I think that's really a good, good way to do that. Uh, let's see, Bruce and Heather Davenport. Hi guys. What are my chances of twins? Uh, I'm doing two frozen day five, uh, five, a five, a B tomorrow in Albany kids of my own natural. Just haven't, I have, don't have tubes. Two are going to increase your odds of pregnancy and twins. It's a hard one to know. Are you going to have a 20% to 40% odds, but it definitely will increase your odds, uh, for that. Uh, let's see. Giselle, uh, I've been doing keto carnivore for years, but I cannot regulate my cycle. What else can I do? Well, this is where maybe electrozole trigger shots come in or Clomid or Lodos injectables. Check your thyroid, your prolactin. Uh, and, you know, how carnivore are you? I mean, I'm a carnivore, but I occasionally will do fries. And some of these things may have adverse effects on our body. Uh, but um, it, it, it's always looking... Do I have tubal damage? Maybe the damage to your ovaries has, has, has really damaged them beyond the repair that'll get you a regular cycle and you need some extra help in all of that. Uh, let's see, Sunday, good morning. Uh, let's see, an excision for endometriosis soon. How soon after would it suggest doing IUI, IVF? Kelsey uh, Marie Quest. Uh, so you could start off really the next cycle uh, to do an IUI or IVF cycle. Uh, let's see here. Three failed cycles and having rheumatoid arthritis, seeing a reproductive immunologist. Uh, EC colon, we can help with that. We are practicing reproductive immunology and infertility and endocrinology, all these things. But I, I would say that you need to look at the the, the immune stuff in the CMI Fertility Family Building Guide, and that can be really helpful. Uh, you can see an immunologist, uh, Dr. Kwak Kim, uh, Dabala, uh, and Dr. Uh, uh, Andre Vidali can be very helpful. Uh, may or may not do all this testing. My bias is uh, you know you have an immune problem because you have rheumatoid arthritis. How aggressive should we be on the immune treatments? Higher dose, higher dose prednisone, higher dose Lovenox, uh, Plaquenil, maybe Neupogen, uh, IVIG, Humera, certainly intralipids, and and stay as keto as you can, by the way. Uh, let's see, Liz uh, Schneider, feelings on Receptiva DX. So the Receptiva DX is an endometrial biopsy to identify your chances of having endometriosis or intra-abdominal pelvic inflammation. And it's a good test. If it's positive, it's 90 eight to 99% that you have endometriosis and you either treat it surgically or medically. Uh, the medical treatment is either Orlissa or Lupron plus letrozole uh, for about two to three months. But if it says you don't have endometriosis, 20% uh, of the time you may still have endometriosis. So it's a false negative. Uh, so I personally, my bias is either treat with surgery or the 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 medical treatment, uh, no matter if you do it or not, uh, in my opinion. Add-ons, do you suggest and why? Takia Wolford. Well, infertility is an immunologic inflammatory conditions. The add-ons are mostly regarding anti-inflammation, uh, aspirin, steroids, L, uh, uh, LDN, CBD, intralipids, then Plaquenil, uh, Prograf, uh, uh, IVIG, and Humira. Look at the level two, three, and four. But if you're infertile, you likely have inflammation as the cause, unless you had a tubal ligation. But because of our ages, there's higher and higher risks of, of inflammation for sure. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, so I would say that if you look at page 73 of the family building guide, again, if you go to the CNY fertility website, go to resources, you could download a digital copy, but if you go to Amazon, you can order a, a fan uh, the uh, paper copy. And we are going to be uh, updating this uh, coming up very quickly here. Dr. Corley wanted me to have a hysteroscopy and DNC. Dr. Luther only did a hysteroscopy, which is ex excellent. Clear. Do I still? He likely did the endometrial biopsy DNC. Some biopsy is always done at the hysteroscopy if it's done in our hands, which is also called a scratch procedure. So likely it was done. EC colon, would you recommend IVIG? Yes, I do recommend it. Itrolipids, uh, Nupagen, uh, Plaquenil, Prednisone. So yes, uh, Immune 4 adds IVIG and or Humira. I think they are very helpful. And don't forget, Kiltz's Keto Lifestyle. It's one meal, high fat, reduce or eliminate the carbs. And remember, if you're a vegan or vegetarian, you want to cook the carbs well and add fat. Uh, in the case of vegans, it's hemp seed oil, coconut oil, maybe some olive oil, uh, by the way. Uh, let's see. Uh, Kelly Grizzle. Hi, Kelly. How you doing? Uh, what are some labs that I need to have done before consultation has known sperm morphology and motility issues. So he has updated tests. Uh, just wasn't sure if they wanted me to do our testing, just make sure. So if you look at our family building guide or go online, there's some lists of all of those, you know, check your thyroid, check your prolactin, check your uterus and fallopian tubes, uh, HSG saline sonogram. Have you had a laparoscopy, hysteroscopy for endometriosis? Um, or look at, you may look at lupus, ANA, ACA. You may look at um, other immunologic conditions, antithyroid antibodies, anti-ovarian antibodies. These aren't necessary, but they may be helpful. Um, look at your blood counts, uh, natural killer cells, um, and then look at metabolic panel. Look at your hemoglobin A1C. Now, do I have, have a higher hemoglobin A1C? gives you more evidence and ideas of, of potentially having a, a pre-diabetes or metabolic disorder. And then genetic or chromosome testing for you, for the egg source and the sperm source, uh, for sure. Um, I think they can be very, very helpful. Uh, Becca, book 91, how long do you recommend waiting after weaning from breastfeeding to do an egg retrieval? Technically, 30 days may be all you need, uh, up to maybe a, a few months, but that should be it. Uh, let's see. Bad situation. First beta day five. Let's see. Uh, moral depravity. Hi, moral depravity. Good morning. First beta day five transfer 63, 91, 143. So the actual number is 1.5 in 48 hours. So your numbers are still pretty close, by the way. Uh, that could be a very normal baby. So stay in your meds, get your ultrasounds, do not stop your meds uh, until you've been confirmed with an ultrasound of viability or not, by the way. Uh, let's see, uh, doing 20K of HCG and Lupron for trigger would uh, help with maturity of eggs, getting immature eggs with 10K of Lupron, uh, 10K plus Lupron. Uh, you could add more HCG plus a dual Lupron trigger. Are you on human growth hormone omnitrope? Maybe even a little nupogen in the stimulation. Uh, and don't forget, uh, yeah, and it might be, again, higher dose of HCG, maybe maybe something that might be helpful for sure. Uh, Rihanna Metcalf, yes, one meal a day is my general recommendation for a healthy human being. Uh, maybe a one meal plus a snack. The best meal is at night. Uh, too many meals a day, uh, keeps our glucose levels higher. It's really a phenomenal concept and idea that is simplicity. If No matter what you're eating, if you simply go to one meal a day, you'll be healthier than ever before. That's what I definitely, definitely recommend for all of us. That's the best thing. Answering, I know this is answering a question, but I just want to thank you. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Four weeks, three days. Uh, Amanda Ward, keep it up, by the way. And all of us need to work together. Uh, there are hardships and, 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 and mistakes that all of us as human beings make. We're very imperfect. We're doing our best today. We're working to do our best and better tomorrow, but we all really want to work together. What did you do? How did you solve your problem? How did you continue with faith and persistence in the process and never, ever, 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 ever 
give up on the journey, by the way. Ovarian PRP procedure, how's it done? Uh, let's see, Stefan Jack. So intra, intra-ovarian and intrauterine platelet-rich plasma, which brings in some anti-inflammatory cells from your blood and maybe some stem cells that may help boost the egg uh, uh, function quality, uh, build your ovarian reserve, uh, and may even in, improve your implantation or your endometrial lining. So how it works, I don't know that we really know that, but it's one of those things if you have poor quality eggs, uh, embryos, and or implantation, uh, or a lower uh, AMH, it can be very helpful to look at that, by the way. Heather PH, how long uh, are you allowed to prime before moving to egg retrieval meds? I usually recommend at least two to four weeks. Some cases, it's two to four months. Uh, keto for sure. Uh, again, intermittent feasting, one meal a day. Uh, if you look at um, my my uh, carnivore, uh, my keto magazine the uh, on Amazon also, uh, you get a lot of good information uh, for sure. Uh, and and uh, Vanessa Rodriguez, thank you for sharing the the fa- CMI Fertility Support Group, uh, The Fertile Spirit with Danielle Bertella. We're really excited about what she's sharing with us. All of us together are really awesome, and I'm really grateful to this CNY fertility family. But really, it's not just CNY. Every fertility team in the world needs to all work together to better improve the outcomes for everyone. Uh, priming allowed before moving to Agri, we answer that. Will Sarasota be doing laparoscopies when they open next month? Yes, Dr. Condrup will be doing laparoscopy hysteroscopies at Doctor's Hospital. Uh, and so we're really excited. I'll be working to get my privileges there and doing some also. Indication for adding Lovenox to your protocol. Stephanie Pelletieri. Uh, again, Lovenox is just another added protocol for idiopathic or unknown inflammation uh, and infertility. Um, I think I add it to the level two protocol. Uh, I think the Lovenox three and four are really to be used for the majority of us. Uh, that are suffering um, this crazy journey. But the Lovenox usually once a day in the level two, uh, once or twice a day for level three, and definitely uh, twice a day in level four. But it's really variable uh, for sure. Uh, well, sometimes we'll switch to heparin later in pregnancy or just stick to Lovenox. Uh, but you got to work with your perinatologist or your OB doctor uh, later in pregnancy. We can help you in the early start stages for sure. Uh, let's see. April uh, Coleman, awesome. Starting your stims coming up. That's really awesome. Had a hysteroscopy on Friday. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ashel Nicole. Uh, let's see. Had a hysteroscopy on Friday. Couldn't get it completed due to possible perforation. Uh, I think uh, these things happen, unfortunately. Sometimes you can, or it just doesn't fill the cavity very well. But I think four weeks is a good one. Uh, and uh, we're willing to take a look at it. Maybe we need to do an ultrasound guided dilation. Be very careful. But it's unlikely to happen a second time. Uh, but these do happen rarely, unfortunately. Uh, Dr. James, how you doing, Jimmy? Uh, yes, uh, doing all kinds of surgery in Sarasota. Uh, Dr. Condor, really excited to have him as part of our team. Our, our Sarasota team is working diligently to get the office up to up to date and working. Uh, starting in September, we're going to start our construction for IVF lab uh, and our ORs there for sure. Keto, five weeks. Uh, uh, only list nine pounds. Only, let's see. Well, Listen, you can eat, do keto and still get too many calories that will not lose the weight. So, uh, you know, I even know for myself, uh, my weight's not dropping and I'm carnivore keto, but I know that I consume a fair amount of fat and I do love chocolate and ice cream, but I'm not working diligently to lose the weight. Uh, Remember, fat is not the cause of disease. Sugar and the plant antigens uh, and and chemicals are the cause. Uh, let's see. Coming off prednisone after two months has caused awful withdrawal headaches. No inflammation markers to speak of. How important is prednisone for my FET? It's not critical, but if you're noticing those, don't wean too fast. Go much slower on that for sure. 
Uh, and, you know, there's lots of reasons for headaches that aren't just the withdrawal, but those are certainly factors in all of this. Uh, light weights, light exercise, walking, biking, light jogging, if you're doing it at all, don't get short of breath, be able to talk. Uh, really, that's the very best. Um, but no other animal purposely burns energy uh, to lose weight because if they don't have the calories in their famine, they're dead. Uh, let's see. Marie uh, QS, uh, is a four-cell embryo even worth transferring? Every embryo is worth transferring. I've seen four-cell embryos become beautiful babies. So don't give up on your embryos yet. Have faith in them. Do the very best for them. Hyperactive thyroid impact fertility found high this cycle. So uh, both, so the causes of hyperactive thyroid, underactive thyroid is inflammation. I think that's the cause. I don't think the T3, T4, or TSH are the cause, uh, but there are some metabolic changes that may happen with high T3, T4 levels. So this is where you may need to be on some medications, uh, but look towards Kiltz's Keto, uh, and get download our book on Amazon, The Fertile Feast, and um, Kiltz's Keto Lifestyle for Fertility. Abnormal embryos, uh, Shannon Kahn. We transfer all embryos because we don't know if they're normal or abnormal unless you get a chance to get implanted. We've transferred abnormal embryos, had normal babies, and we transferred normal embryos and early, early miscarriages that showed out actually to be an abnormal pregnancy, which is kind of crazy, isn't it? Don't forget, get yourself a journal, write each and every day. Focus on spirituality, prayer, faith, and a positive, positive uh, intention of life. Look at my book, The Fertile Secret. I wrote 10 plus years ago. We got to do some changes, updating, maybe new cover. Very excited about all the things we're putting out there. But listen, what you put out is what we want to hear. We want to hear what you're thinking and feeling. Share your videos. Uh, share it to Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube. The more we can share the, the CNY Fertile Journey, affordability, quality access, and integrating Eastern and Western medicine. Uh, we offer and have uh, support for acupuncture, local or in-house, not always in-house, and our, and our CNY Fertility and CNY Healing Arts in Syracuse is kind of separated in buildings now. So 191 is our healing arts, CNY Healing Arts and the CNY Fertility, but we're still going to be doing acupuncture and massage for fertility in, in the 195. C.P. Villas got a positive pregnancy test to a vitamin C and E. Yes. And our molecular fertility supplements are pre and with pregnancy. Uh, for sure. Uh, and the supplements, the folic acid are all very critical, important, vitamin D. Uh, so keep keep on that, by the way. Let's see. Uh, I will be in the office this Tuesday, the 23rd, uh, or is it the 24th? I will be there. Let's see. What is today? Today is the 22nd, Monday, 23rd, Tuesday, the 24th. I will be there. Uh, see you at 8 a.m. Just ask for me, by the way. I'm often doing transfers. <clears throat> Dr. Corley, uh, Dr. Lutheran are doing the majority of the retrievals, but I'm there. Love to come over and meet you at least if I'm not doing your procedure. Uh, IVF uh, Inva. Uh, let's see. Benefit of adding gonal to a medicated FET travel team. Well, if, if you're not making a good lining with just estrogen, and we found that you developed a nice lining with the gonadotropins in a stimulated cycle. That's why we would add the uh, gonadotropins. But I usually keep it at a lower dose and don't do the higher dose uh, for sure. Uh, and yes, I think low-dose naltrexone, Melissa, is safe. Uh, if you go to the LDN books on Amazon, there's so much out there on on uh, LDN. Now, whether you take it for life or the omnitrope, I, I don't know that. I mean, we're, we're working to treat a problem, uh, infertility, uh, which is an inflammatory condition. But once you've gone through all this stuff, you know, you've got to decide for yourself what type of supplements or, or medications you're going to take uh, in, in, in order to uh, be healthier for sure. Uh, uh, Raffle Chrissy. 
uh, is it safe to get the vaccine during stem or transfer? Will it affect the stems or cycle success? I don't know that we know the right answer for that. I'm generally recommending the vaccine before treatment or once you're pregnant, uh, but it's still a lot of unknowns in all of this. It's an individual choice, I think, for everyone, but it does appear that the vaccine is somewhat protective of more uh, um, um, uh, severe COVID virus, uh, so we're currently recommending it, uh, yes. Um, and I don't, again, I don't know that. We don't have enough history in the stimulated process, but before or after I think is reasonable. Can you do an ERA if you plan on doing stims for transfer? Yes, you can still do an ERA, whether you do gonadotropins, letrozole, estrogen, or a natural cycle. The ERA, ERP can be done for sure. Uh, uh, Miranda, Ray, how are you? Very tired and low energy since your transfer rest. I, I get tired. We all get tired. I think this, this thing about reproduction and all these medications, my bet is we weren't running around all the time. We are not resting enough. We need to rest more, more naps, uh, more meditation and prayer. Uh, if you're not feeling, I tell you to rest more. Uh, when you suggest adding intralipids, benefits of adding them, uh, sunny Sunday. Uh, I think intralipids, if you're infertile, add the lipids. If you're not allergic to soy or eggs, you can take it. I think it's really helpful. Uh, endometriosis other than keto diet. So the molecular fertility supplements uh, are really good. Uh, the uh, female ovarian bloom and the female essentials. And then also don't forget the vitamin D, um, low-dose naltrexone, CBD can be helpful. Um, in some cases, if you have severe diminished reserve DHEA in the 25 to 75 milligram level, lots of great information out on the internet, free of charge. Um, and, and those are the main things, uh, that, that ubiquinol, uh, omega-3 fatty acids, I think, uh, we do have, uh, uh omega-3 fatty acids also in the molecular fertility supplements. Uh, Dr. Horat boosters at baseline for FET. Um, uh, boosters of HCG. If you're in a low dose stimulation, that's okay. Again, it's it's trying to improve the 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 luteal phase, uh, and adding the boosters can be helpful. Uh, we are open on Labor Day uh, for sure, Emily. Uh, Samantha, uh, I, I know, just day six of stem. Should I be feeling? Uh, super bloated and full. And yes, you do get bloated and bloated is pretty normal in this process. We're stimulating the ovaries, even with clomin or letrozole or the low dose injectables, your ovaries are getting bigger. You're going to feel bloated. Uh, let's see. Amanda Blair, carnivore keto, five day blast uh, with pre-transfer massage, pre and post acupuncture, Dr. Rupert and transfer. Amazing positive experience, see my family praying for a positive. We are all together visualizing a positive, successful outcome for everyone in this journey. And if you hold that, no matter what comes about, keep holding that. Have faith, whether you're an atheist, a theist, or in between, uh, the agnostic, have faith in God within you, by the way. And God is the vibrational energy of us and hold that together as a family. We're all working together to be helpful in this world. We have to keep doing that. Hey, Maureen Paraloni, how you doing? Uh, let's see. The, oh, and my, the, 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 the people on the phones answering them have an amazing, amazing, amazing uh, uh, energy to be helpful. It's been crazy. So many calls are coming through. So I apologize if it takes so long, but we're really, really been working with Rebecca and the whole team. I'm grateful to everyone for continuing to help be patient in the process. We all need to work together. And boy, do we get emotional and frustrated and, and depressed and angry and sad. But we all need to come to the temple within all of us every day and have faith in God's way, by the way. Uh, let's see, Tabitha Latour. 
Tonzio. Hi, Tabitha. How you doing? Explain how one could respond better to Clomid than letrozole. Well, we don't know, you know, like anything else, if what you're doing isn't working, do something different. And Clomid or letrozole or tamoxifen even, and sometimes it's doing both or all of them with or without the low-dose gonadotropins to get to get response. And again, we don't know why some people are allergic to peanuts and other people are not. Don't know that. Uh, it's genetically predisposed or it's our environmental uh, exposures since before we were born. And maybe even the exposure of the sperm and the egg changed the DNA of that egg and sperm, which affected the embryo. So we have to remember that that the environment affects our DNA on an ongoing basis. Now with this DNA uh, uh, treatments and CRISPR, our DNA is capable of modifying at all times. The sperm and the egg aren't just sitting there frozen and not doing anything. There's a dynamic changes going on, by the way. Uh, let's see. Does letrozole increase FSH? Stefan, well, it's going to increase your LH and FSH in your brain in order to stimulate the ovary. Or we use letrozole or clomid for guys along with low dose uh, HCG uh, in order to stimulate the testicles uh, or the ovaries. Uh, Deborah Santiago, do I need an HSG if I had a tubal ligation? No, you don't need a saline sonogram to look at your cavity and look at the architecture of the uterus with an ultrasound can be very, very, very helpful. At least that one is good. The HSG is looking at the proximal tubes, but it's not necessary. It's just another option in all of this. Rihanna Metcalf. Hi, Rihanna. How you doing? Uh, thank you guys for your, your questions and comments. Tell us where you're coming from. Where do you live? Uh, we always love sharing your stories, but get on our TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, uh, all of these things to share your stories, what you did. Or even if you didn't have a good experience, share it with us how we can all be better and do better. We're all working every day to do better for you. And I need to hear these things so I can work with our team to improve all of our outcomes. Uh, let's see, 30 follicles at last ultrasound and only eight retrieve. Well, follicles don't mean eggs and don't mean maturity, unfortunately. This is the hard part. What's the cause of your infertility? Uh, and, and I think lower dose protocols are better, 10, 220. I do for low, low and high responders all day long and do well. Uh, I'm not a big proponent of of of, uh, of PGS testing either, nor blasts in many cases. There may be some male factor to all of that, uh, and and um, I think though that you know we're PCOS and you're not ovulating can damage your eggs, your follicles, and we learned that while we're doing this. By the way, uh, T Sweet O five day three FET seventeen waiting for beta and praying for the best. All of us, remember, no matter your gender description, uh, your, your, your color, size, shape, age, weight, we're here, no matter your belief systems, because we honor you, whether you're a carnivore or a vegan or somewhere in between. We all want to be here for you. And weight-wise, we believe that we need to be looking at all of us as human beings and recognizing that our job is to help you in this journey. And the weight excess isn't the cause, but it's the food we put in the belly or the bucket that ultimately seeps into our bloodstream, every nook and cranny, and causes all the problems. Hold yes and close to some time and possible cement. Let's see, Nicole, uh, let's see, I don't, uh, let's see. Work as a nurse on a COVID unit in Florida with the medications associated with the immune protocol be contraindicated based on? I don't think so because these things are modifying your immune system. Uh, I don't think they're, 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 but COVID environment is probably more risky. But to my knowledge, the Prograph and the Plaquenil, if you're pregnant, you shouldn't be on the Prograph, by the way, uh, at this point. But I think steroids can be, can be very helpful. Uh, and by the way, uh, IUIs still work very nicely, uh, even working on naturally to improve your fertility. That's what this is all about. How can we naturally improve your fertility? 
Uh, is it changing what you put in here, in here, and how you move this Ferrari, right? We're the temples, the Ferraris, the most expensive irreplaceable being of the universe. That's what you and I are. And the more we talk about this, the more we share it, and yes, it's hard, but anyone can do easy. I know each of us can do the hard work that's necessary. Uh, what are so good ways to increase testosterone levels in males? MZ, ladies, carnivore keto is key, in my opinion. Get off the treadmill because there are a lot of anti uh, uh, tes testosterone, anti androgens in the plant foods we eat, the seeds and nuts. Uh, and, and that's been, I think, one of the biggest problems. Uh, you can take HCG boosters, by the way, for guys, 250 units a day, low dose Clomid, uh, 25 or 2.5 electrozole, that can also uh, improve the testosterone. So guys, you can take testosterone and HCG, but testosterone with without HCG uh, isn't going to uh, help things at all. Monitoring, monitoring ultrasounds for IUI are impossible. My ovaries are hard to see. Uh, abdominal ultrasound can be very helpful for some of these challenges. Uh, but I know, yes, it can be hard sometimes, uh, but uh, ask the, the ultrasonographer, the nurse doing the scan to use an abdominal probe and look abdominally for sure. Uh, let's see, Erin Marie Cirrus. Usually the HCG boosters start with transfer. That's when I usually start them, but you could technically start them earlier at a lower dose and then go uh, to the 250 units uh, when you actually uh, uh, do your transfer. Uh, may have to skip interlipids due to how difficult it is to set an IV for sure. But that's where Kiltz's Keto ice cream comes in. It's cream, egg, uh, uh, a little bit of white sugar, but just a little bit, and vanilla bean, uh, uh, the insides of the scraping of the bean. Uh, but uh, add the fat, bacon, eggs, butter, beef, ice cream, and salt. When you do that, uh, interlipids. But you can drink it, by the way, uh, even. Uh, so don't forget, add the fat. Uh, let's see, uh, maybe consider ultrasound for us difficult IV patients. And you could even get a, a, um, uh, a pick line in potentially for those difficult ones, which can last for uh, weeks or even months if necessary. But that's a whole other entity. Even IVIG or intralipids can be, could be put through that. Uh, but you need ultrasound guided, a pick line. Many hospitals have a team to do that. Uh, let's see, Jalen Glenn, why do I need IVF for RPL? I don't understand because I'm able to get pregnant. I just can't stay pregnant. Well, you don't need IVF with recurrent pregnancy loss or repetitive implantation failure naturally. There's LDN, CBD, keto. There's the immune two, three, and four protocols. We use them <clears throat> to help people even do an IUI or laparoscopy hysteroscopy for endometriosis. IVF is just one modality. So is IUI. Continue having sex. More intimacy is critical in our lives, by the way. Uh, even when you're working to get pregnant, be patient with your partner. Work on these over time. Don't rush the process, by the way. Uh, patience is the key to all of this. Um, and, and so again, IUI, IVF, natural, but talk about how you can do lipids prior to pregnancy, IVIG for two to three months, go keto for several months before you do this. Even things like human growth, uh, priming, esterase, prometrium, HGH, or the, the, the antimicrobial, antihistamine, and the anti-endo protocols can be very, very, very helpful, by the way. Uh, let's see, Nicole transferred to 12 weeks of pregnant. Uh, let's see, you guys are really wonderful. Thank you very, very, very much for helping answer so many of these questions. Uh, it's helping me, our team and all of us. Uh, we're here to help you and guide you throughout the process. Uh, what do you think about a modified natural protocol? Tubes are tied, three natural pregnancies, one failed transfer, Alejandra Gonzalez. Yes, we do a lot of either natural or modified natural. So natural with you do an ovulation predictor kit if you have rock solid regular 28 to 29 day cycles. Uh, call with the positive surge. We can do a progesterone level and then plan the transfer. Or you can do ultrasounds 
and trigger shot uh, with or without letrozole or clomid or low dose injectables in the process. That's really modified natural or just do a natural. Safe to go back, uh, back to back transfers, or should you take a break in between cycles? Uh, Spana core. Um, I think it goes either way. It depends how you're emotionally, physically, even financially feeling in the process. If it takes a little more time, that's okay. Uh, take it, uh, get, you know, uh, join our, our, our support groups. Oh, Aaron McCullough and Fertile Hope Yoga. Uh, join our support groups, come together in helping everyone, uh, whether it's it's changing what you put in the mind or the mouth or how you move the body. Yoga, Tai Chi, cool it down. Uh, but I think taking a break isn't necessary. Uh, Prograph and Tecrolimus is the same, by the way. And there are a few medicines that are kind of similar. Uh, and we usually, you know, we try to stick to the ones we use the most, but we can help you if you find a uh, an equivalent, which is a lower price. We want to help you for sure. HCG used for after transfer. It's as a booster. Uh, it may help support the luteal phase and bring progesterones up, uh, but it helps with implantation. Injectable ovarian PRP be done during a lap hysteroscopy. Christine Bunner Thomas. Yes, you can do the PRP during the laparoscopy hysteroscopies if it's done in-house. If it's done at the hospitals, it's a little hard, harder to do that. Uh, our embryologists, uh, embryologists don't work on Sundays. Yes, they do, by the way. If for the case, yeah, they do work on Sundays. They're the only ones in our team that works seven days a week, 365 days a year. Uh, so our gratitude and hard work to our embryology teams at all of our locations, really proud of them and the amazing work that they're doing for sure. Uh, so, uh, yes, uh, if you didn't get, uh, you should get, uh, embryos are in the fifth. They usually won't call you on an update of your embryos on Sundays, uh, but they'll either freeze them on the fifth day or the sixth day or the seventh day of, of, of culture uh, if they make it, and you'll you'll hear something the next day. That's the one part is they they they're doing their work, and then they get out of the house and get to their families as much as they can. Twenty nine uh, with the tubal ligation, no other fertility issues, and my chance to get pregnant. First round IVF, uh, taking CoQ10 vitamins. What are my chances? Well, uh, at twenty nine, you're probably at the fifty to sixty percent delivery rates. But again, you're either zero or 100%. No one knows which one you are. That's the challenge. Carnivore Yogi, Sarah, don't forget, check out Carnivore Yogi. Uh, Sarah's awesome, really has some great, great stuff to share. And again, it's, it's food ideas. Whether you're a vegan or vegetarian or carnivorian, listen and learn from that. Don't forget also uh, Judy Cho, uh, her new book on Carnivore Cure. I did a recent... Um, a podcast with her, uh, and we're going to be putting a link on all of our 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 uh, uh, social media. So check it out. Uh, go to uh, Judy uh, Cho, and don't forget the same thing. I did a nice uh, a conversation with Sarah on Carnivore, and has some really great stuff to share. Excited about what she's doing. Uh, let's see, Doctor Mag do ovarian PRP. Camille, yes, Colorado. Doctor Mag, Doctor Fink, both do it. Uh, let's see. I'm terrified to switch doctors now. Is there any way to stay with you or Dr. Luther in Syracuse? Uh, we're, we're all there for you, by the way. If you're going to travel out to one of our other locations, we have amazing doctors um, really working to help you on this journey get the very, very, very best care. Uh, let's see. Vanessa Rodriguez. Um, Dr. Scott, yes, feel free to join the CLK. Great. Rihanna, I'm on birth control to for my cycle before trans or PCOS. Either esterase, prometrium, or the birth control pill. I tend to stay away from the birth control pill. I use esterase, two to four milligrams, prometrium, 200 to 400. I think that's a good, you can take it oral or vaginal. Uh, that's a good way. Alyssa, uh, let's see, foul on. What could we do to help with implantation? Uh, went so well, first cycle over implantation failed, spontaneous IVF. So it's not just the egg, the sperm, the embryo. It's also implantation environment. 
So all everything we're talking about is how to reduce inflammation, acupuncture, massage, yoga, tai chi, uh, carnivore keto, keto veganism, whichever you're finding in this, it really finds something that's going to resonate with your belief system. But if what you believe in isn't working, maybe you can tweak it a little bit, be open to ideas that are out of the box. But again, back to family building guide uh, on page 73 is the sample immune protocols. Again, just sample ideas. They're not exactly what, what you will do or everyone will do, but a lot of ideas of what to add to the process. Uh, percentage of success with IVF. So PGT doesn't improve your odds, but identifying normal embryos to transfer improves your odds of each individual transfer. But overall, it doesn't improve your odds if you're going to transfer all your embryos anyway. But it's helpful. We offer it. We do it. Uh, I have my slight differences in opinions. Uh, that's really it. Uh, nowhere local I can get to do pre-testing. Fly to one of the closest clinics to do this. Yes, Ninja Ninja Nini. Uh, you could come to one of our locations. We can send you uh, the kits and the orders to go to LabCorp to get your blood work to a radiology to get your ultrasounds and HSGs. Your OBGYN may be willing to help you also. We want to definitely help you get that, that covered and make it easier for you. Uh, any chance of opening a Washington, D.C. office? Megan uh, McCowie, yes, there is an odds. Uh, just keep the idea. We're going to be opening in so many places, getting lots of help to build the foundation to help you get uh, the success you you hope for. But we're helping. Look, the world has changed. You don't have to go somewhere to get information. That's free of charge. Uh, we're all biased in our sharing of information, by the way. I don't know the right answer for you or everyone. I'm sharing ideas that maybe we all need to take a step back and be open to the possibilities and don't ever, 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 ever let go of those possibilities of what you're practicing this day nor every single other day in the universe. Amanda Chapman, how are you doing? Praying for success to get lucky again, right? Uh, we are taking care of people from Washington State, Washington, D.C., Florida, Mexico, um, Australia, England, Canada, um, the Middle East, uh, everywhere in this globe, we're here to take care of you and be open to the possibilities. If what you're doing isn't working, take a turn. It's either 45 or 180, uh, but keep moving and learning new and different things every single day. Because what I've learned as a physician, many of the randomized studies that get published aren't, aren't accurate enough. Uh, and quite often, uh, people don't publish the negative studies that we need to learn from. But sometimes even our biases kind of throw a wrench in all of this stuff. Uh, let's see. Uh, what dose of CBD do you recommend? So it's usually one or two dropper fills uh, twice, once or twice a day, uh, 500 to 1,000 milligrams per per dropper. Uh, so, or in the whole bottle, by the way. So, you know, there's quite variability in all of that. You can use topical uh, you can use uh, some sprays, lots of different ways to do that. No THC, by the way, no alcohol, no marijuana, no tobacco, uh, no substitutes. Um, uh, for me, it's really, really, really want to narrow everything you're doing. Yes, Seattle will be awesome. We're working on that. But, you know, we don't want to go too quickly. You know, a lot of going too fast can be a big challenge in all this process. Slow and easy. Uh, two miscarriages, two failed transfers, and make a good amount of blasts, two retrieval, six blasts each time, 40 years young, PCOS, what should I do next? Well, again, family building guide, read it thoroughly. Laparoscopy, hysteroscopy, for endo. Do a month of the antimicrobial, the antihistamine, and maybe do the anti-endo or Alyssa letrozole for two months. Uh, <clears throat> and then look at the immune four protocol, IVIG, Start a couple of weeks prior to transfer and then go to 14 weeks every other week. Intralipids, once a week until 12 weeks, every two weeks until, until 28 weeks, and then maybe monthly. And stay Kiltz's carnivore keto or some form of Dr. Kiltz's keto for fertility. 
whether you're a vegan or vegetarian, remember one meal a day, high fat, cook the carbs well, and don't forget, add the uh, faith to the Ferrari. Remember, we're lionesses and lions, not pigs and cows, and all respect to pigs and cows, by the way. Uh, Brittany may have already answered this. How many days should my husband abstain from sex prior to egg retrieval? You don't have to abstain from sex. Sex is good for us. Intimacy is good for us. Um, and even the day of the transfer, the day of the IUI, the day after, we need to find our intimacy again. Uh, we are, we're fighting it, our emotions, our anger, our frustrations. I talked to a beautiful couple the other day, you know, they're, they're, they're fighting this and the, they're, they're breaking, uh, we're breaking it. And what we need to do is listen to our partners and, 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 and love them. And even when it's like, oh man, I'm not doing that or I won't do that. That's not, I don't know. We all go for a walk in nature, take some time to sit at the piano or play the guitar, uh, do some painting or pottery. Uh, I love to get into my pottery studio and do some kilts cups. I've got a whole batch coming out uh, on Etsy uh, and I just have fun with them. We all have to find something that we can do. I've got... Uh, some very abstract paintings on the wall. I'm an abstract mud thrower. Uh, and the more mud we throw, sometimes you just step back and someone's going to say, wow, that's amazing. And uh, the more art you do in life, the more amazing you'll feel and the better you'll feel in life. Amount of hours should someone do be on progesterone before transfer? The average is about 120, uh, but it could be 140 to 160. It could be uh, in the in the 100 hours. But in general, uh, uh, transfer on the sixth day of progesterone is our standard process. Uh, P plus five, I think it's called. Uh, but there's some variability in all of that. And a week before my period in beta is three, I have TR done, uh, uh, but am priming to do an IUI. Wanda, Cordero, uh, repeat that HCG. We're praying that it's going to be a positive pregnancy. Uh, I, you know, we have so many doing uh, kilts as keto lifestyle for fertility. Again, the ideas of what you put in here and here and how you move this thing here is going to improve your success, whether it's natural or with assisted reproductive technologies. Remember, the majority of people in this world have babies naturally. They're not doing testing on their embryos. They're just having babies. All right. 41 years young, AMH at 2.45, seven blasts. Uh, Christy O'Neill, don't check your, don't do the PGS testing, make embryos and put them in, give nature the chance that it's due. You biopsy here, you get an abnormality, but in fact, many of the other cells are completely normal. That's called mosaicism. I don't think PGS testing is accurate enough. Even when it says you're not mosaic, it's just not good enough. Uh, they would have never gotten, put me in my mother's, uh, uterus, if they tested me beforehand, we've seen many, many abnormal embryos become normal babies and many normal embryos miscarry and find out it's abnormal tissue. The genetic material is always moving. It's not stagnant. The, the environment in and around us is affecting our DNA, uh, the telomeres and all the motion. Uh, it's really, really, really fascinating concepts and ideas that we're learning on this process but be open to change. And if what you're doing isn't working, make embryos and put them in. That's what I think. Christy O'Neill. Uh, uh, yes. Again, uh, again, for everyone, family building guide, Amazon, paper copy. You can get a Kindle also, or go to our website, see my fertility, lots of great resources there to help you and everyone else. Uh, let's see. Lady in purple, again, 26. Uh, thank you again for sharing and asking questions. Keep sharing them around the globe. Uh, the more we build this family of helping others, even in the frustration, the anger, the negativity. Oh, boy. I'm meeting my good friend, uh, Paul, in about, uh, uh, about 10 minutes, having a little cup of tea in Java or water. Uh, my, I talked to my good friend, Dr. Paul Magarelli, Mags in, in Colorado. 
Uh, really doing our very best with the all team members. Veronica in-house is going to our global team. Really excited about that. To the global team, to Donna, to the travel team, Justine, but <clears throat> the call team, Rebecca, uh, Ali, Stephanie on our, our, our uh, donor teams. Uh, really excited. Oh, Dr. Ivanov is going to take, a, I think, a week off uh, and our Philadelphia team. And really excited about everyone coming together and working together. Uh, Maria Cruz, I can take the uh, laxative Miralax and Benadryl on stimulation days. I think you can. You know, my bias about all these, these laxatives, uh, be patient with your bowels. Don't force them or push them. Um, and this is where adding fat or uh, omega-3s or cod liver oil uh, is good. Uh, let's see, Andre, 28 from Los Angeles. Kid who grew up in L.A., Silver Lake. Uh, at Los Angeles City College, John Marshall High School, and then USC, UC Davis, and then back to LA for training uh, from all over the country and the world. And we're hoping to get a place in uh, Southern California, Northern California. Uh, but talk to your OBGYNs. Are they get get them some of our family building guides and and have them look at ways of improving your fertility naturally and making IVF more affordable for more people. That's really, really, really the key uh, to all of this, by the way. Brittany Noble Jack, uh, Dr. Magrelli told me that I couldn't do that. Uh, I, again, I, I I think a little bit of this stuff, by the way, is okay. You know, don't go too heavy on all this stuff. You're going to feel bloated during the stimulation. It's more likely your ovaries than your bowels. How Jane, Jaina uh, Bino... Uh, let's see, how many embryos? One to two embryos at age 36. Uh, I don't recommend more than that. Uh, let's see, hello, uh, uh, Tashi, uh, Canada. Uh, uh, Dr. Faruqi in Montreal, we're working to get them integrated more, more uh, consults, more monitoring, more IVF integrating, and also working uh, with uh, Toronto uh, Group, uh, and also anywhere in Canada, we'll work with your fertility doctors to give you more access to ideas. Uh, but uh, 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 Tashi D, how are you? Shared in your clinic so many. Thank you very, very, very much. Those twins, awesome. Always share your pictures, your success. Look at Dr. Rob Kiltz on my, my uh, uh, Facebooks. Uh, see my fertility Facebook. Share these with everyone. That's what we, we want to do. Uh, said I couldn't do fresh transfer and have remaining embryos sent PG testing. Uh, we offer fresh transfers in Colorado also. You don't have to do PGS testing, by the way. It's just another option. Uh, but again, you drive the what you want. We may make our recommendations that we're gonna we're gonna recommend a frozen or a fresh. Uh, but we're open to helping you on the journey that you want to be on. We're not, we're not going to force you to do one way or another. Uh, let's see. Fresh, two miscarriages, 06, 08, got three empty eggs and one unfertilized egg, 22 to COVID, all stopped. My, please give me diet supplements for healthy eggs. Uh, let's see. Vishal, uh, Vishal Akashi, ready. Look at the family building guide, CNY Fertility. It's got all the information. Uh, do some form of Kiltz's Keto Lifestyle. One meal, high fat. Uh, get rid of a bunch of carbs, especially the uncooked ones. Uh, Lotus Nux, Trexone, uh, DHEA, uh, Omega-3s are helpful. Uh, Omnitrope, Cerevital uh, can be helpful also. Remember, there's a lot of maze. We don't know if this medication is going to do it, but it's going to be helpful for sure. Uh, so don't forget that. Yes, DHEA can help egg quality. Uh, there's lots of free information on the on the internet. Wherever you get your DHEA from, it can be very, very, very helpful to improving your fertility, by the way. Uh, let's see. Uh, so we're going to close up here in just a moment. It's really, really spectacular always to share with you guys. Uh, I've been off for two weeks. My first week, I had my hernias repaired at Kraus, Dr. Sartori. The Kraus nursing, all the teams, the doctors, everyone there is amazing. Uh, and Dr. Sartori did an awesome job. I'm healing well, uh, and I feel great. Great to be back full-time starting on Monday. 
tomorrow, but always here to continue to share with you. Fresh or frozen transfer, please. <clears throat> Flaky Zoo. <clears throat> Overall, frozen may be a little bit better, but both work nicely. Uh, we know people travel all over the globe to CNY Fertility Centers. We want to make uh, this, this uh, uh, easier for you. So both fresh and frozen, I think, work. We need to look at it individually and make the decision. If your progesterone's over three for sure, it's two to three. It's in the gray zone with the trigger shot, by the way. All right. I'll see you guys in the week. Um, I'll be coming down to Sarasota a little bit, hoping to get out to Colorado, visit our docs and our uh, providers, and visit you guys. But remember, share on the internet, social media, whatever way it is, my blessings and faith and success to you on this journey. Uh, Dr. Rob Kiltz, again, share this. Keep sharing it and sharing it. Take